This was my first visit to Grover's Bend. And if things didn't turn out just right, it might be my last. I was keeping an appointment with a gunslinger who hated me. And I guess he had reason to. You seldom make close friends by sending people to jail. And Mort Phillips had just finished serving five years. Compliments of yours truly. My name's Slade. Where can I find Mort Phillips? years. For me, it's been a lifetime. My life ended in that prison. They might just as well have buried me as to let me out again. Considering how many notches you had on your gun, Mort, I'd say you got off easy. Gun fighting was my business. It was all I ever knew. And now you figure you're going to start all over again. Right where you left off, huh? With me. I figured you'd come when you got the word. I outshot you once before, Mort. Now, what makes you think I can't do it again? Not this time you won't. Don't think because you've got a gun under that table that you've got any advantage. I've got another kind of advantage, Slade. They took it off in prison. Blood poisoning from a shotgun wound. In my right hand. That's too bad. Yeah, that's too bad. But don't think because I'm not carrying a gun, you aren't going to be just as dead. Billy. Meet Billy Rigg, my new right hand, and a faster, better man with a gun than I ever was. Now you think you're going to have this uh, boy do your shootout for you, huh? You get the idea. Well, I'm sorry, Mort. I'm just not in the habit of killing children. You've got no choice, Slade. But not with that shotgun. We've got a real gun for you. All cleaned and oiled. Blake. Go on. Put it on. You know, it's a funny thing, Slade. Watching Billy shoot, I get the notion that the ghost of my own hand had got into him. Working the fingers, snapping up the wrist. Now just why are you willing to do this, boy? Because Mord Phillips is my friend. Because I think you got it coming. It's your first move, Mr. Slade. I'll make the last one. Touch your gun, Slade. And you're a dead man. That goes for everybody. Mr. Slade is under arrest. You're not the law here, Lydia. Well, I'm not just wearing this badge to see the light bounce off it. And I'm not carrying this Winchester to keep my arms from getting short. Drop that gun, Belton. Start walking, mister. Yes, ma'am. I don't know why I'm under arrest, but it certainly is a welcome change. Leave it alone. I'll bring it. In case you're interested, the Citizens Committee voted last night to have you and your hoodlum gang run out of town. It's going to take a lot more than votes to do that. It's not one fighting man in the whole bunch. Maybe that's been changed.
straight to the jail, Mr. Slade. Daddy, this is Mr. Slade. My father, Marshal Prescott. How do you do, sir? Daddy got a bullet in the leg trying to interfere with Mort Phillips. Was that when he made you a deputy? Don't blame that on me. She pinned that badge on herself. It was partly a bluff, but we knew that Mort Phillips would have Billy Rigg gun you down. And we needed you. We? The Citizens Committee. We had to organize to try and stop Mort Phillips and his gang. It's still a vigilante movement and outside the law. So is Mort Phillips outside the law. We're only fighting fire with fire. Will somebody please tell me what's going on around here? We want you to investigate Mort Phillips. What's there to investigate? Nothing but an ex-gunslinger with a prison record. And a grudge against the world. Do you know why Mort Phillips came to Grover's Band in the first place, Mr. Slade? Oh, I don't. This town was founded by a man named Benjamin Harris. He was a very kind and generous man who built up this community. When he died, he gave his property to those who helped build this town. Joshua Tanner, for instance. Josh's general store is on land that originally belonged to Ben Harris. Not only me, Mr. Slade, half the folks here are on land that once was Ben's. Then, two months ago, Mort Phillips came to town claiming that his real name was James Harris, that he was the brother of Ben. Did he have any proof? Some old letters, correspondence between Ben Harris and his brother, dated many years prior to Ben's death. Phillips claims them letters give him title to the property. That sounds like a decision for a court to make. <laughs> Mort Phillips won't wait for a court decision. He says he knows he's within his rights in taking over the property. With the help of a gang and a gunslinger, huh? Exactly. That sounds to me like Mort Phillips is afraid that the courts won't see things his way. Mr. Slade, when we heard that you were on your way here, the committee voted funds. 500 now and 500 after the job is done. What happens if uh, Mort Phillips turns out to really be Jim Harris? We're willing to take that chance. I'm willing to take the job. You, uh... You may not be here to collect the other five, Mr. Slade. What about Billy Rigg? I'll take care of Billy Rigg. Without a gun. Any investigation starts with all the information you can get. And information is where you find it. Most people in Grover's Bend were willing to talk about the late Ben Harris. But when the subject got around to Mort Phillips and his claim that he was Ben's long-lost brother, some of the less courageous wouldn't say a word. Some information would have to be dug up a long way from Grover's Bend. But thanks to a New England inventor named Samuel Morse, this was going to be possible. tells me that Slade's going all over town asking questions. Maybe it's time he got something besides answers. He's not backing a gun. Would that make any difference? You never shot down an unarmed man, Mr. Phillips? Hmm? Well, no, of course not. Maybe it's time that we uh, taught Mr. Slade it'd be a good idea to carry a gun sometimes, huh? Mr. Slade. I want to thank you for your part in helping arrest me this morning. The credit all goes to Lydia Prescott for that. Sit down. Thanks. Now there's a woman who would make a great newspaper man. What can I do for you, Mr. Slade? What if you could tell me? Who knew Ben Harris's brother James? Nobody. You mean he never existed? No, I don't mean that, Mr. Slade. When Ben Harris settled here, his, his brother James was in the East somewhere. I knew Ben had a brother. He had me witness the legal document once. It had to do with the sale of some property in St. Louis, and James's signature was on it. 
I got the impression at the time that James was a sort of a black sheep of the family. Are there any examples of James Harris's signature available now? Oh, yes. I was executor of the uh, Harris estate. And there are several letters from James Harris among Ben's effects. Has any attempt been made to compare them with uh, samples of Mort Phillips' handwriting? What handwriting? Mr. Phillips has conveniently traded his right hand for a hook. Yes. Well, thanks very much for your help, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, is there any chance of my seeing copies of the James Harris's letters? Well, they're in the safety deposit box at the bank. Be glad to show them to you any time. I'll know by this time tomorrow that'll be necessary. playing possum. Oh, no, ma'am. Possum wouldn't get treatment like this. Oh. Serves you right for scaring me half to death. Oh. Hey, what time is it? It's almost five o'clock. Mr. Slade, we have no right to ask you to get mixed up in all of this. You have every right to. It's my business. It's the way I make my living. All the money in the world's not worth getting killed for. It's sure nice to know that somebody cares. Thanks. Lydia. Keep the 500. Leave town tonight. I'll explain it to the committee. Nobody could blame you. You're not suggesting that I uh, run out on Billy Rigg, are you? I don't want him to kill you. Supposing I kill him, Lydia? No, no, you couldn't. I, I mean, he's too fast to gun. Nobody could stand up against him. You know, it just came to me that you might have had another reason for stopping that shootout this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. Look at me. Don't you know? If it's humanly possible, Lydia, I promise you, I'll try not to kill him. Billy boy, and don't turn around. What's your game, Slade? I don't play games, son. I work. And right now, you're part of my job. Well, nice balance here. What do you know? No notches. What's the matter, boy? Haven't you been earning your keep? Or hasn't Mort Phillips asked you to gun down anybody else but me yet? 
get to the point. What do you want? All right. How long have you known Mort? Uh, one, five, ten years? I've known him long before you framed him for that holdup and got him sent to jail. But you were scared of him, Slade. That's why you ruined his hand. He must have been just a kid then. I can see how a gunslinger like Mort Phillips could make quite an impression on a kid. He saved my life. That's what I've heard. Maybe that don't mean anything to you, Slade. But Mort Phillips gunned down a wild, drunken bullwhacker who has beat me to a pulp with his whip. Yes, and I can see how you could be very grateful for that. But tell me something. Was killing that wild, drunken bullwhacker the only way he could have stopped him? No use running Mort Phillips down, Slade. I know him. And I know you. Now listen. Supposing I can prove to you that Mort Phillips is a phony. A yellow-bellied coward that hasn't got the nerve to shoot an old lady, even in the back. You're the one who's lost his nerve, Slade. You're crawling to get out of a gunfight you got no stomach for. You're right about that last part. I sure got no stomach for it. But listen, do you really believe that Lydia Prescott and the good citizens of this town are trying to cheat Mort Phillips out of something that belongs to him? Of course they are. This whole town practically stole that property from Mort's brother. Now, supposing I can prove to you that the real Jim Harris died six years ago with one of Mort's bullets in him. Mort wouldn't lie to me. If he says he's Jim Harris, that's good enough for me. You're in for some shocks and surprises, Billy Boy. Shocks and surprises. Incidentally, does Mort know you're seeing Lilia Prescott on the slide? Did she tell you that? Not in so many words. Watch out for her, Billy. A woman like that can take the teeth out of a gunfighter. Any of them. Here. Don't use that unless you've thought about it for a long time. Easy does it, boys. I'm unarmed. Tell your men to get out, Mort. I want to talk with you. All right, man. What makes you so sure you're not asking for another beating? No, Mort. Only as a last resort. I got you figured out. So? So seeing Billy Rigg gun me down means more to you than all the loot you could take out of Grover's Bend. Next best thing to killing you myself. That's why I don't think you're gonna have one of your muscle brain men shoot me when I'm not looking. You shoot it out with Billy Rigg? I don't think you won't catch a bullet in the back. Might not be as much fun, but you'll be dead just the same. You know, I'm gonna blow the whistle on all your phony claims to this town, what? I'm not worried. Jim Harris was killed in a train holdup. Among his personal effects was a case containing some legal documents and some correspondence. Well, you found out quite a lot already, haven't you? That's right. And by tomorrow afternoon, I hope to find out whether or not you were among the gang that held up that train. By tomorrow afternoon, you'll be dead. One way or another. I'll up the ante, Mort. Let's make it 12 noon. Now, you tell Billy Rigg I'll be waiting for him outside that telegraph office. And tell him this time I won't let anything interfere. I'll tell him. By mid-morning next day, the whole town seemed to know about my date with Billy Rigg at high noon. There was one person in Grover's Bend that the news upset more than anyone. It's gonna be all right. I can't lose. You can't lose. What happens to you after you've killed Slade? 
You mustn't go through with it, Billy. I have to. You don't understand. It's a, a point of honor. I owe this to Mort Phillips. You owe him nothing. What about yourself? Us? It won't change anything. Why does it have to? Because you'll have killed a man. A man whom you have nothing against personally. Doesn't that mean anything to you? It does when I think about it. But then, I remember what that man did to Mort Phillips. And it makes it easy. For the last time, Billy. I'm sorry, Lydia. And for your sake, I hope Slade is faster. <laughs> By 10 minutes to 12, Grover's Ben was beginning to feel like a bomb about to explode. Word must have even reached out of town. For about now, riders from the outlying ranches were beginning to show up. If I'd gone to the telegraph office once that morning, I'd been there a dozen times. But the one bit of information I was counting on to blow this thing wide open had still not arrived. Take it easy, Lydia. Hang on to yourself. Nothing's happened yet. He'll be here any minute now. It's almost noon. Whatever happens, don't you try to stop it, do you hear? At one minute before 12, Mort Phillips came out to see the show. He wanted to make sure he had a grandstand seat. Seconds later, Billy Rigg walked out of the hotel into the middle of the street. Billy had it so firmly entrenched in his mind that he was Mort Phillips' right hand and duty bound to settle a score for Phillips that nothing short of a miracle would stop him now. The miracle came, and it came in the form of the message I've been waiting for. A message brought by thin strands of wire across a thousand miles of wilderness. Just words, but they saved Billy Rigg from himself. Mr. Eckhart. Well, I'll be. Show it to Billy Rigg. Yeah. Billy, this is something you've got to see yourself. It's some kind of a trick. I don't believe it. This isn't true. Suppose we find out, Billy. Mr. Phillips, Slade's had some kind of message sent to him. It's supposed to be from the prison where you were. I reckon he's just showing his color again, Billy. Anything to keep from getting what's coming to you, eh, Slade? It says you never had any operation while you were in prison. That when you left there, you had both hands. Both of them, huh? What do you call this, Slade? Does that look like a hand to you? Looks like a hook strapped over a hand to me, Mort. Ah, just what I thought. He only had one practical reason for this hook, Billy. It kept him from having to duplicate Jim Harris's handwriting, but he had another reason, a real one. When Mort Phillips left prison, he had all the cynical hatred of a killer. But he just lost his nerve. <laughs> Billy, come back. I don't think you'll have any more trouble with Phillips, Mr. Eckhart. I guess you won't have to pretend anymore, Phillips. Let's go.